good morning students good morning to all and last day we have studied about the regadian theory of rent so today also just we will remain about the regadian theory of rent and we will go to the next concepts so rent is the price or reward given for the use of land or house or a machine to the owner normally normally what we will think about the rent mean rent is the price or reward are given for the use of land or house or a machine to the owner normally if any of the owner of any of the producers want to produce any of the goods he must use the land or house or a machines when he is using these factors or this land or machines he must given to some of the given the reward to the land or house or machines so the given some of the reward the reward given for the use of land only is called as a rent but in economics so rent or economic rent refers to the part of payment made by a tenant to his landlords for the use of land only for the purpose of cultivating the land only we have to given the rent according to the economics so and next we have studied the regadian theory of rent so for on the basis of the regadian theory is the rent is given to the land on the purpose of the intextable or the original power of the soils so we have to taken some of the assumptions to prove this theory first one is land differs in fertility so on the basis of the land it will be differs on the basis of fertility next the law of diminishing returns operates in this land the law of diminishing returns only will be operates because when we are using the land as continuously so the productivity of the land will be diminished next rent depends upon the fertility so most fertility land only will be getting the more rent next this theory assumes perfect competition perfect competition means so everybody can easily enter into the market and it will be accepted from that next it is based on the assumptions of long run this theory is based on the assumptions of long period because suddenly we will not get the yield from the cultivation land so we must consider the long term phenomenon next land is used for cultivations only nowadays we are using the land for many purposes but regardians are considered regardian told us to consider to the land is only used for the cultivations next land has certain original powers so land has certain original powers means to the indestructible powers even if you are cultivate any of the seed it will be as some of the productivity next most most fertility land only cultivated are first so normally if there is many land we will use the most fertility land only cultivate at first so on the basis of this theory he is assumed some of the stories so that we have we should have the three types of land a and b and c and some of the peoples go to a newly discovered island and settle down there and there are three grades of land namely a b and c so first some of the peoples only will be selected the a grade land and the a grade land also will have some of the productivity productivity means per 1 acre the 40 bags of paddy is going to cultivated suppose another group of people goes to settle down in the same island after some times hence the demand for agricultural produce will be increase then the most fertility land alone cannot produce all the food grains that are needed on account of the operation of law of diminishing returns so as i told so when the land has the law of diminishing returns so this productivity from the land is not enabled to all the new peoples so the new peoples will be going to use the second grade the b grade land to cultivate to the paddy so when we are comparing to the b grade land with the a grade land 
so the a grade land will produce the 40 bags paddy per acre but the b grade land will be produce the 30 bags paddy only on the phases of the fertility so we can consider the a grade land as the 40 uh, 10 bags paddy as surplus the surplus bags paddy only is considered as a rent for the a grade land so after some time so after some time some of the extra people are also going to the same island and settle down now the b grade land and a grade land bags of paddy will not sufficient to the c grade or the extra peoples so the c grade land will going to use for cultivating the paddy and here the c grade land will produce the 20 bags only but when we are comparing the c grade land with the a grade land the c a grade land will produce the 20 grade surplus bags but the c grade land only will have the 20 bags of paddy only so when we are dedicating uh, the a grade land paddies so the c grade land only will have the 20 bags of paddy only the 20 bags of paddy will equal to the cost of production so we can consider the a grade land will have the 20 surplus bags of paddy so the b grade land also will have the 10 bags of surplus paddy so the b grade land the rent for the b grade land is just 10 bags of paddy and the rent for the a grade land will get the 20 bags of paddy next the c grade land will never get the land so here the no rent land the c grade land is considered as a no rent land so the, the three columns are considered as a a grade land b grade land and c grade land so a grade land will produce 40 bags of paddy so this a grade land will get the economic rent because on the basis of the fertility of the land it will be produce 40 percentage of the paddy next the b grade land also will get the 30 bags of paddy so this b and the c grade land will get the economic rent but the c grade land will never get the economic rent land so this rent is considered as a this the c grade land is considered as a no rent land okay students then today we will study the next concept the quasi rent the quasi rent is a surplus that the producer receives in the short period over variable cost from the sale of output so the Marshall introduced the concept of quasi rent the factors other than land say planned machinery or fixed supply during the short period so except the land the other factor of productions other factor of productions mean the fixed supply the machineries and the planned and some of the extra tools also considered as a other factor of productions so they earn surplus income when demand rises suppose the demand is increased we will change the variable factor on the basis of the demand so suddenly we can adapt or arrange some extra machineries so from the extra machineries if you are getting some of the profit or these machineries will get some of the extra rent this rent is considered as a quasi rent it is purely temporary as it disappears in long run due to increase in supply in short run we cannot increase any of the more supply in short run we cannot increase the any of commodities with more supply but in this long run we can easily increase by changing all the variable factors and the fixed factors but if you want to increasing the supply of commodities within the short period we have to take some of the effort so what are the effect we can take so we can apply some of the extra machineries and this extra machineries and some of the plant also will get some extra rent on the basis of demand 
so within the short period this plant or some machineries will get some of the extra rent this extra rent is called uh, considered as a quasi rent but this quasi rent will be disappear automatically in the long run so the quasi mean it is the illusions within the short term only some of the machineries and the plant will get some of the extra rent and uh, automatically it will be disappears so we can consider that this is a quasi rent the quasi means the illusions the quasi rent is a surplus that a producer receives in the short period over variable cost from the sale of output so here we have to know about the difference between the quasi rent and the rent if you are considering the rent the rent accrues to land only on the basis of regarding degrees the rent and not the regard in there is on the basis of economics the rent only will result from the use of land but quasi rent accrues to man made appliances man made appliances means the machinery and the plane everything made by the and by the man so the quasi rent will be received from the man made appliances Next, the supply of land is fixed forever. So, if you are considering the supply, the productivity of the land always will be the fixed. But the quasi rent, the supply of man-made appliances is fixed for a short period only. Within the short period only, we can increase the supply of commodity by using the machineries and some of the tools. But within the long run, it will be disappears. so the supply of man made appliances is fixed for a short period only in long period it will be disappears next the rent enters into the price but the quasi rent it does not enter into the price because for using the machinery only we will get but rent is used for the land for cultivating any of the crops the quasi rent is the income derived from machines and other appliances made by the man next is the modern theory of rent the classical economist thought that land as a factor of production was different from other factor of production so the classical economist thought that the land only is the peculiar factor of production other than the other factor of productions but modern economist thought that all the factor of productions are like and there is no basic differences between them because we have studied if you want to produce any of the commodities the four factor of productions must be arranged without any without fail so the ratio may be changed but we must use the four factor of productions but the classical economist thought that the land only is the peculiar facts of productions so there is no basic difference between the other factor of productions hence a special theory was rent developed by the rigado it is not necessary so therefore economists like john robinson and bolding have contributed their ideas for the determination of rent so which is known as modern theory of rent the essence of the conception of rent is the conception of surplus earned by a particular part of a factor of production over and above the minimum earnings that is necessary in induce it to work so on the basis of modern theory of rent the rent is the difference between the actual earnings of a factor of production and its transfer earnings transfer earnings mean now if the labor are used to, to produce any of the commodities and the, within the short period or within the long period if there is no employed by for the labor he will go to another one of the works so whenever he going to change transferring their work he will get some extra earnings so how much amount of the extra earning is earned by the labor is considered as the rent next the wages 
so who will get the wages mean the labor the labor will only will get the wages for their work the wages are a payment for the services of the laborer whether the laborer may be the intellectual or the physical so wage may be paid daily weekly fortnightly monthly or yearly and partly at the end of the year in the form of bonus so for the purpose of producing any of the commodities by the laborer he will get some of the remunerations in the form of wages so normally the wages will be paid by daily or weekly or monthly or yearly or fortnightly and on the basis of the notifications so what's the meaning of wages the wages is the price paid to the laborer for the services rendered so the services provided by the laborer is indispensable so without objection so we must using the laborer for the purpose of producing any of the commodities so a sum of money paid under contract by an employer to a worker for the services rendered considered as wages here the four kinds of wages are there normally the wages are classified on four types first one is nominal wages or money wages so nominal wages means it referred to the wages paid in terms of money only normally if you are doing some of the work for our owner or the producers we will get some of the remunerations in the form of money only so without any of the other incentives next real wages the real wages are the wages paid in the terms of goods and services hence real wages are the purchasing power of money wages normally after getting some of the remunerations in the form of money so after earning some amount of money in the form of, uh, after earning some amount of remunerations in the form of money we will get some of the services and some of the incentives or some of the bonus as the epi epi or pf everything will be added so when added everything our purchasing power will be increased so on the basis of our purchasing power of commodity if you are considered our wages that is called real wages next peace wages according to this the wages that are paid on the basis of quantum of work done so on the basis of the quantum of work done if you are getting the wages it is considered as a peace wages on the basis of our work how much amount of work we have done within the one day we will get some of the wages that is called peace wages normally the contractual persons always will get the peace wages if you are completed some amount of work he will get some of the wages next time wages so the wages that are paid on the basis of the amount of time that the worker works so normally the mason carpenter and some of the professionalist will be worked on the basis of time he will get some of the wages these wages are considered as a time wages per hour he will get some of the per hour the workers will get some of the some amount of money as a wages mostly the machine operator are the doctors and the carpenters some of the professionalist people will get the time wages in this wages different type of the theories are there that theories are called as a theories of wages so in this theories of wages many of the theories are there to explaining the wages first one of the theory is subsistence theory of wages the subsistence theory is one of the oldest theory of wages so it was first explained by the pisiocrats a group of french economists and restated by ricardo 
So according to this theory, wage must be equal to the subsistence level of the laborer and his family. The wage must be equal to the subsistence level of the laborer and his family. So before that we have to understand what is the meaning of subsistence level. The subsistence means the minimum amount of food, clothing and shelter which workers and their family require for existence. If any of the laborer going to the work, the wage must be equal to their subsistence level. Subsistence level means the basic necessity of life. The wage must be equal to the, equal to fulfill the basic necessity of life only. So by using this wage, he can use the food, the cloth and shelter. After that, he cannot purchase any of the commodities as extra. If workers are paid higher wages than the subsistence level, the workers would be better off and they will have large families. Hence the population would increase. When the population increases, the supply of laborer would increase and therefore wage will come down. So this Ricardo considered if the laborer are going to get more wages, his purchasing power will be increased. And because of that, he the populations will be increased. Population will be increased means so we can consider in which means so it will be increased. So when the population increases, the supply of laborer will be increased. Now normally the population of our nation is increased mean. So the labor, the supply of labor also will be increased. If the supply of labor increased, what will happen? So all the existing labor will get the low wages. So on the other hand, if the wages are lower than the subsistence level, there would be a reduction in population and thereby the supply of labor falls and the wage increases to the subsistence level. Suppose if you are increasing the wage rate lower than the air subsistence level, the wage rate will be increases and the supply of labor also will be decreased. Because the demand of the labor will be increased if there is low wages for the labor mean. They will come to the work and they will eat and purchase some cloth and they will live for their basic necessity one. This theory holds that the wages of workers would not be above or below the subsistence level of the laborer and his family. So if you are considering the wages, the wages must be equal to the subsistence level of the laborer and his family only. But here many of the criticisms are there. So what are the criticisms means? The role of trade unions in collective bargaining was not found. So normally if the laborer are there, so the union trade, the trade unions must be existing in our nations. So whenever the wage rate is going to decrease beyond the optimum level or the reasonable level, the trade union will be collective bargaining, but it was not found. Next, it does not explain the difference in wages in different occupations. So normally on the basis of the occupations, the wage rate will be different, but the different wage rate will not be entered. Next, the assumptions that population would increase with the rise in wage rate is not correct. So poor families have more children than rich families. So wage rate alone does not determine the birth rate actually. As increase, people can afford to downsize their family size for adopting costly family planning procedures, while poor people cannot do so. So normally the peoples will never birth more child. So on the basis of their subsistence level only, they will live. But even some of the poor families have more children than the rich families. Normally if you are considering the rich families, they will have one or two more children. But the poor people will have the dozen time of peoples. So these subsistence levels will have more criticisms. Okay students, I think it's enough.
if you have any doubt please ask me and just to take the subsistence theory of wages as your study portions thank you